Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty, and if I've done my job properly, you're watching me in black and white, properly. Oh Lord, it's very early in the morning, you're going to have to forgive me. This is the second instalment for this particular zodiac sign. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. This is the colours of the zodiac associated with Aries. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours are associated with Aries and what those colours represent, which palette I use to create this look and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you have the best seat in the house. As I've said for some time and oft it echoed elsewhere, but without the accompaniment of Sammy the Sloth Straw, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Uh, a little bit of strange lighting at the moment. It's still only quarter to seven in the morning. Um, it's very, very dark and dismal out there. So my lights are very much helping the situation right now. Um, I have LED strip lights behind the camera. I don't have a ring light or anything like that or a soft box or anything. Uh, but hopefully... If it brightens up, I can reduce the, the level of the actual lighting behind the camera. But, of course, this is uh, another part of my Zodiac series for Aries. And this is the colours associated with Aries. So I'll put the picture up here. As you can see, Aries is a fire sign. And it's one of the fieriest of the fire signs. People think that Leo... Is, is fiery? Mmm, you haven't met an Aries yet, probably. Not a true Aries. My mum was a true Aries. <sighs> Moving on. Um, but you can see, the colour spectrum actually starts off on the cold side. We have a navy blue, and then a royal blue, and then an air force blue, and then a cornflower blue. And that's very cool, very, very cool. It's not a warm blue at all. There's no hint of, of yellow or green or teal or anything in there. That, they are pure, cold blue. And then we jump straight into hot, and we stay hot right to the other end of the, the stream. So you start off with the burgundy, you run all the way through your reds, through your oranges, through your yellows, and finish with a creamy yellowy white. So, it's a bright, fiery sign. I've not used this particular palette on screen much yet. This is the Kaleidos 5, the Neon, no, the 4, the Neon, sorry, which looks like this. So you can see we have, in the mats, a red, an orange, a yellow. Can't use the green because that's not on there anywhere. Then we have a pink and like a golden red shimmer. So again, if I just cover up the green, that is pretty much Aries in a bubble. So this is the palette that I'm going to be using today. Now, this remains a teaching channel. And as such, I will probably go at a speed slower than most of you would want. But with my chronic pain, I go at a speed that doesn't hurt me has the benefit that it helps beginners because they can keep up with me. I zoom right in tight so it's just my eyes on screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing and I talk you through each step. 
Um, for those of you who are thinking, oh, I can't be asked with all this bloody astrology nonsense. Because I know there are some of you out there that are like that. All of the astrology nonsense will be in the outro. During the middle, I'm going to be concentrating on teaching you how to achieve the eye look that I'm doing. Okay? As part of that, I've got deep set eyes. For a long time I thought they were hooded until a pain somnia moment when I'm flicking through old sort of journals that people had put up from the 60s and 50s and 60s about eye shapes and how to adjust your eye shadow for the different eye shapes that I realised actually I've got deep set eyes, not hooded eyes. And the workarounds for both type of eye are very different, even though the way that shadow wears on those eyes throughout the day is remarkably similar, hence why people get the confusion. So, in just a moment I'll be inserting a clip. Again, it'll just be my eyes on screen, so it's be very up close. And I will talk you through how to work out whether you have deep set or hooded eyes. And I'll be explaining the workarounds for each type of eye. I keep looking at myself because I keep feeling like I'm not quite... I feel like my camera's a bit crooked, maybe. If I'm on a slant, I'm sorry. I'll, um, I'll try and sort that through the day, if I can, with the editing. If not, I may need to fiddle with my camera settings. Um, if I'm going too slowly for you, if you're more experienced and you just want to see what colours I'm using, how they blend together, etc. There's a speed widget, it's either up there or down there depending whether you're on phone or laptop or whatever feel free to speed me up right I'll insert the clip now and I will see you at the other end of it when I'll be applying some coloured pigments to my eyelids now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So, unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now, she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid 
or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Right. I think I've just about sorted the camera angle, I think. Right, I'm going to go in with this tapered blending brush. It's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off with Boss, which is the orange. Um, these are quite dusty, but just a it means you look at that colour. A it means you're getting pigment on your brush, but also just tap back off into the into the pan itself. Let me show you. I don't know if that's going to show up where it's so neon. Um, and you can just pick the kick up up when you continue. Now we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz of blending. So basically that's natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turn to come back away again. Always hold your brush at the very end so you put as little pressure on your lid as possible. And I'm going to start just above where my natural crease line is. And the reason that I do the Viennese Waltz of Blending rather than the Windshield Wiper which you'll see a lot of the younger gurus do not that I'm a guru yet um, I'm 46 years old I've lost over 14 stone that's over 200 pounds so the skin on my eyelids moves but I know 20 year olds that have always been slim that have quite flexible eyelids so it can just be a genetic thing and by doing this we're very gently moving the skin around in both directions which means if it does fold over on itself we're not going to get those telltale white stripes so I'm just going to go sort of two, I've, I've literally just gone two thirds of the way along Fleckle and back again. I always start off at the outside corner or the outside edge because if you do end up depositing too much pigment and have to blend it out, it's so much easier when your nose isn't in the way. You can do it with your eyes shut if you know your eyelid shape. The reason I didn't cover or close my other eye is because this eye that I'm doing now I'm blinding so if I closed it I couldn't guarantee A I'd be on screen or B that uh, I'd be focused I mean, I'd, I'd probably I've, I've done my makeup so often now I could probably actually put it on without looking because muscle memory etc but I wouldn't be able to see depth of pigment etc etc now, you notice I keep relaxing my brows, sitting back and checking 
that both shapes are the same because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you photoshop them afterwards like a certain Jimmy Chuck so you do sometimes for, for example I've done exactly the same shape on both eyes but on this eye it looks higher so I need to bring this side up a little bit just fractionally there you see to get the same shape but then if you look I've had to go much closer to the brow that side than this side so that's what I was saying about always double checking and that's why I don't like seeing people do one eye and then go I'm going to do the other eye off camera because how can you check this if you've got all your other colours blended in you know I just I don't get it I really don't it's making life difficult for yourself okay I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth that I've got here um, I used to use colour switches but they are way too harsh on the bristles of your brushes especially if you're using a natural head brush I mean this is a synthetic um, but yeah I, I, I don't advise colour switches except as a very very last result ok so let's clean all the orange off I'm now going to go into level up which is the yellow beautiful daffodil yellow this one look at that now if you are blending two colors together which is what I'm going to do here because I'm not doing an editorial look today start off with your brush half on the color half off to start your blend and what this will do is it will give you a very soft blend between the colours with no harsh line because what we're looking for is a gentle gradient you can see there now you can't really say where the orange stops and the yellow starts which is exactly the effect that I wanted Oh, morning general, how's the wife? There's a magpie on the uh, line post outside. But just the one, so we salute him and ask him how his wife is. If you're wondering where that superstition came around from, magpies are like swans and they mate for life. So you're saluting and asking about his wife assuming that he is coupled and happy hence the one for sorrow say so, full of useless information me or useful whichever you whichever adjective you prefer how's your day been any superstitions that you follow i've got quite a few but then being half welsh well, couldn't a lot of people part which <laughs> I think it was a W they were saying at the start of the word um, there's quite a few that I follow uh, I don't walk under ladders if I can help it but that's mainly because I don't want a bucket landing on me head um, or a wet chamois leather from the window cleaner Um, black cats are good luck, 13 is lucky for me, not unlucky. Uh, I never put new shoes on a table. That comes about from when people died in the old days and used to lay them out in the front parlour. You would generally buy new shoes for them. So new shoes on a table meant you'd bought them for a corpse, basically. That's where that one started from. Um, I don't mind opening an umbrella indoors, but I wouldn't ever stand underneath it. All little things. While I'm blending this yellow out and sounding like a complete nut and not case. But you can see I just built the yellow up. 
Move it down the front here. Sort of carrying it round the inner corner there. Although I will put probably some highlight around that bit as well. I just wanted a little bit of the yellow to come right down there. Okay, clean the brush off. And then I'm going to go for a slightly more um, slightly more tapered brush, a smaller blending brush. Whatever the size of the head of the brush, that's how far it will blend a colour out to. So, obviously this one will blend out to a much smaller area, which is what I want. I'm going to go into Game Over, which is the red. Oh, this is very dusty. And I'm going to go right into my natural crease. If you've moved your crease line, this is the point that you put this colour along where you've moved your crease to. Because darker colours recede backwards, lighter colours come forward. So by doing this, we are very carefully tricking the eye into thinking that this part of the eye is further away. So if you've had to create a new crease, this will help reinforce the fact that that's the crease and it goes back and it goes... See? I'm just going to bring that down just onto the corner of the mobile lid there. like that. Now I know Miss Nona's going to love this look. She loves a good bit of orange. So I know that this is going to be right up her alley. Again, just Keeping that blend as tight as possible. I'm just checking that the shapes match. And then bring it down. Onto the outer edge of the mobile lid. Like so. Right, clean the brush off. I do tend to get more fallout on this side because where it was pulled around a lot when I was a kid at the ophthalmic, um, there's super deep creasing just here that you can see. Um, and because of that, I do have to treat this eye a bit differently when I'm putting shimmer on. Because if I don't actually stretch the lid out, what happens is um, I end up with shimmer building up in those creases and then it flakes off during the day. Now I've just got a pad here with some micellar water on. I'm just going to tidy up the lower lash line and the outer edge. I don't like using tape. Because if it's sticky enough to stop pigment from going underneath it, then it's going to pull on your skin as you take it off. So you might be giving yourself a nice straight line, but you're also giving yourself wrinkles. And let's face it, nobody wants that. Right, I'm going to use my Revolution Cucumber Fixing Spray to wet the brush after I've applied the pigment, because obviously you never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. This is a flat, um, it's either a tiny shade or it's a lip brush, I can never remember which it is. And I'm going to go into Easter Egg, which is the pink, and I don't think I've actually used this pink yet. I know I've used the goldy red, 
But I don't think I've used this pink, so this is going to be a new one for me. Again, very, very soft shadow. Now, once you've wet it, the ferrule will be wet. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Otherwise, you get water going down here and you end up with the glue loosening and then you don't have a brush, you have a stick. Right. I'm going to come right into the inner corner here. Bring that up. And then using the very tip of the bristles, I'm just going to lightly buff where that pink meets the red, just to soften it off a little bit. And I'm going to dry the brush off, load some more pigment back up on the brush. Now, as I said, I do have to stretch my lid out on my left eye. Now, I'll show you how I do that to try and prevent doing any more damage than I already have to. Dry the ferrule. Right, so, creasing is about the width of my finger. So add another width in and then put your finger on the lid. And I'm very gently stretching out, but only as far as it takes to stretch out the creasing. I'm not pulling it out to my ear hole. And I'm literally just applying the pigment and blending to make sure and then gently letting go. And then I shall fill in the rest of the lid in the same way that I did my right eye. And again, tip of the bristles to blend. Okay, right my lovelies, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go and um, pop some foundation and whatnot on. And uh, I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait a little while before I can talk to you again. But for you my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. Hello. I am back and my brows have gone particularly fluffy this morning. But I'm not mad at it. I'm trying a new soap brow thingy from a company called Pink Honey. And this one um, is uh, strawberry scented. Which just, you can't smell that, but I can, and it just appealed to me this morning. So, there we go. Um, and then I went over it with Revolution Pro Dark Brown Brow Pencil. I do occasionally do normal coloured brows. Just occasionally. Right, I'm going into Game Over with this flat top brush. Just gonna run that underneath my eye. Um, long term viewers will know I can't really put anything in my waterline. Um, I've always had ridiculously watery eyes. Add to that one of my fibro symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever. If I put anything in my waterline I doubt if I can even finish doing the intro without my eyes streaming. So, there we go. But I do like fluffing out this bottom um, lash line because I think it, it gives a similar effect. So, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it. 
flat topped and chunky. <laughs> You're like me. Yeah. Um, but you can use any thick, dense smudger brush or blending brush or whatever. I'm going to dip into Level Up, which is that gorgeous yellow. And I'm going to use that just to buff out the lower lash line, which should, if my colour theory proves me right, give me a little bit of orange in the middle of it. Make it look like I've used all the colours. I love a little bit of colour theory. And hopefully this bright look will brighten the weather up a little bit too. I like that. I like that a lot. Right. Um, again, long term viewers will know that I am an affiliate of Gerard Cosmetics. I do earn a small commission when you use my link or my code. Um, and they do occasionally um, give me a store credit so I can buy more products to show off. That being the case, this is one of them. This is the um, the first one of their highlighters I've got, which is Audrey. I bought myself. This one is Grace. What I love about theirs is you have this little plastic window, and it's just that extra bit of reassurance when you're travelling that your highlighter's not going to get damaged, and I love that. Plus, they do some really beautiful shades. This is the lightest highlighter they do at the moment. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought over a decade ago off eBay I think. It's great for getting up under the brows and doing the inner corner though. Which is just where I'm going. And I like to bring that down under the lash line just to blend it in. Particularly where I don't put anything on the waterline. I just think that helps just to complete the eye look and works really nicely with my eye shape. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this Gerard highlighter all over my face. Well, not all over it, but probably over quite a bit of it. <laughs> Put some mascara on, choose a lippy, and I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. Hey, my lovelies, I am back, and I thought, as I've done such a hot look, I'd pop my gorgeous... Away. Um, this, there's a long story behind this hat. One of my longest, closest friends who sees me as a big sister, and I call him my, he calls me his sister from another blister and he's my brother from another mother. He had this about, oh God, 10, 11 years ago. And I said to him, I'm going to have that hat. He went, no you're not, no you're not. I am, I'm going to have that hat. No you're not, no you're not. And just before lockdown started, at the beginning of the year, I was at a karaoke that he was doing. And uh, he came up and he plopped it on my head and he went, the missus reckons I've got to get rid of some crap. So I thought if I give it to you, at least I still see it. So I told you I was going to get it badger and I was right. Love you. Right, um, obviously the Gerard Grace on my high points of my face. Uh, the mascara is the Essence uh, Lash Paradise with the orange top. The lippy is the Sapphire Colourgar Colourpop uh, Berry Minion lipsticks to be the deepest of the red to pull the whole thing together. Right, so, while I'm telling you a wee bit about Aries and its colours, 
Uh, if you're a regular 4F baby, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you, but they're leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious. So please double check that for me. And maybe give me a cheeky like and a bit of a comment while you're listening. Mm, that'd be lovely, thank you. So, the colours of Aries. As I said, it's a fire sign. It's super fiery. It is the fieriest of the entire 12 zodiac signs. I refuse to accept this 13th one. It does not exist. Mar uh, Aries is for people who are born between March the 21st and April the 19th. And the colours reinforce the fact that they're assertive, they're urgent, they're a leader. Um, if you've got a group of people together and you need someone to stand up and corral the group, run things, nine times out of ten it'll be a Firestein who steps up. And if there's more than one fire sign there, usually the Aries will win. They are... They're very loyal, but they're also very impulsive. Um, they will go for conflict first before resolution. They will see fight before flight. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, because in terms of military strategists and... You know, things like that where, you know, things are not good. You need someone with that kind of strength, that kind of almost impulsiveness. And of course, as I discussed in yesterday's film, the ruling planet for Aries is Mars, which is the, the Roman god of war. So, again, the colours and the planet, they all tie in together to reinforce the fact that if you want someone to take charge and be aggressive and be assertive and be right at the front with you and fighting hand to tooth, it's going to be an Aries. That's who you want. Yes, there are, there are some dubious parts of an Aries that perhaps we prefer not to, to see so much of. Um, you know... Whilst in a military strategist we want aggression, it's maybe not necessarily what we're looking for in a school teacher, you know. Um, but certainly the Aries is, in that respect, probably the strongest of the zodiac signs. So, there we go. It takes a very strong personality to handle an Aries. Or someone with unenviable patience, like Job. Right, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something you liked, either the makeup, the blethering, or the information on Aries. Um, I don't know which one it is that's kept you this long, but hi. <laughs> We'd love to welcome you to the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Uh, then you say yes and all notifications and you keep saying that until YouTube stop asking you the same damn question, just phrased differently. And hopefully they'll tell you, oh god, I don't know, one in four of my films that go up. My husband is one of my subscribers and even he doesn't get notified of all of my films going up so I know there are issues still. That being the case, I've got an awful lot of other films you can watch. There's all of the preceding episodes of this Zodiac. Uh, so far, this is the fourth sign that I've done. I started with Capricorn, moved on to Aquarius and Pisces, now obviously Aries. There are four films for each zodiac sign. This is the second one for Aries. There's still two more to go that I haven't filmed yet. Running behind because of pain, but, you know, hey-ho. Uh, but there's there's lots of other things you can watch. I've got product reviews. I've got um, challenges, tags, uh, loads of collabs, loads of makeup tutorials. And I even read you my favourite poem. So there's going to be something to interest you. So if you're looking for a little bit of me time, basically grab a drink, grab a snack, 
pick a playlist, put your feet up and just chill for a bit. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.